welcome to the Builders Association Builders Talk. My name is Kiana Sinks, and I'm really excited to have you all join us this morning for a great conversation with some amazing people who are very well um, dressed in construction and careers. And we're going to talk about retaining and how this is just such an amazing profession to associate yourselves with. I would like to thank our sponsors, J.E. Dunn Construction, along with our second sponsor for today, SWACO. And I want to give Caleb um, an opportunity with the Builder Association to uh, set the tone for this morning and, and to hear a little bit from you about why we're here today and, and what's on tap for the Builder Association. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Caleb McCandless. I am the Professional Developments and Workforce Director for the Builders Association. Um, like Kiona said, we are excited to be hosting this conversation today. Um, we have some great panelists lined up. Um, I'm sure you're eager to hear from them, but I also wanted to take just a few seconds to thank our sponsors. Um, it's because of them that we're able to do events like this. Um, so thank you again to J.E. Dunn, who is our 2021 Diamond Sponsor, and to SWACA for sponsoring this conversation today. Um, if you're not familiar with the Builders Association, we are a nonprofit commercial construction trade association. Um, we have hundreds of member companies who employ over 25,000 employees. Um, we strive to advance the industry and really to improve lives through construction. And we do that through offering a lot of different services. Um, they include safety training, workforce and professional developments, um, labor and government relations, our electronic plan room, and last but not least, our social networking events that we're all really excited to get back to just as soon as we can safely do that. Um, I personally am proud to be a part of our workforce and professional development team. Um, we work hard to try to make sure there's a pipeline of well-trained talents for the future of our industry. Um, if you would like any more information, please reach out to myself, or Ramond Holt, who is our outreach manager. Um, both of our contact information is available on our website, uh, buildersassociation.com. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kiona. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Caleb, so much. And, and thank you all again for joining us. And I would like to kick off this morning and just jump right in and start introducing our panel. Um, and wanted to kick the first question uh, to you, Tina, and just really talk about um, construction and the stigma that we all know um, exists in this profession. As we look at you all and see how successful you guys have been able to kind of maneuver your careers. And so I just wanted to open up uh, for a, a question and just ask you, you know, why construction? You know, why did you choose uh, to, to make your career in, in this capacity? Um, in such a way that has led you to where you are? For me, it was kind of a family thing. Um, my husband was actually a concrete finisher and it just kind of spilt over to the rest of the family. So uh, myself and my brothers uh, just kind of fell in. We were working for a non-union company and uh, my husband ended up joining the union. So we all came to and when they said, uh, that I could also join. I was actually surprised because it was 25 years ago. I uh, had no idea that uh, women could be in the union, uh, but I didn't have any problems. So uh, there is a stigma. There's a lot of times you got to prove yourself. Uh, somebody used to say that we had to work twice as hard to look half as good. I don't think that's quite true, but uh, we do have to you know, at least maintain what we can um, to do everything that the men do uh, as well as they do it. Absolutely. There is so much more that women have to consider uh, in the in the industry. And and of course, Stephen, um, I'm coming to you, but wanted to talk a little bit um, to Jacob first. And Jacob, you, I know that obviously you're, you're starting out and you're moving forward um, and have so much more insight as to what you want construction to be, um, why are you starting to pivot and kind of look at this as an opportunity to set, set yourself up for success in this profession? There was a lot more options um, in the construction base. Um, you can do pretty much anything you wanted. Uh, there's so many different things in a 
when it comes to industrial building, especially um, there, there's five different, at least five different trades in there and you can learn, you can learn them all. Um, there's just more opportunity in construction than most. Absolutely. And Stephen, I know you and Bill, um, feel free to chime in. You, you, you talk about just in depth and, and kind of longevity. You both have seen everything. <laughs> and so why construction for you both? Um, and, and Bill, can you talk a little bit about your day to day and, and the lives that you've seen changed um, in this profession as well? So, so I've been in this business for 45 years. <laughs> I think I must be the oldest panelist here. So but no, I've, I've never done anything else since the time I was a, a late teenager. And so I was always interested in the uh, construction industry and the things that we did. The idea of being able to finish something once you completed it and seeing that thing come to completion was probably the thing that uh, attracted me the most to the construction industry. Uh, we've been in business for myself for about uh, going on 23 years. And... Uh, Things have changed a lot in the 45 years I've been in this industry, even the fact of safety. So when I started in the, the trade, you know, 45 years ago, safety was just a word. Uh, safety now has taken uh, our industry to a whole different level and definitely made it, it a lot safer and, and getting people home with all the fingers and toes. And so uh, I welcome Jacob, you know, into the industry. And I think uh, if he treats it as well as he's treated me, he will enjoy it. 45 years of, uh, uh, of the trade. And, uh, and that's what people have to realize. It's, a, it, it's not a job, it's a career. And uh, when you approach it as a career, I think you find a lot more enjoyment in what you do. Yeah, Bill, I think those are great thoughts. And I'll just, I'll add to that. My, my experience uh, with the construction industry was um, very similar. Um, you know, I grew up, um, doing a lot of different manual labor uh, jobs, um, you know, from mowing yards uh, and then started to build, you know, retaining walls from there. Um, and then uh, was able to um, be on a, um, a rough end crew uh, building homes uh, around the Lee Summit area. And, um, and then I was also uh, for a short time, uh, a laborer out in the field. And, uh, you know, as I was going through that, I was trying to decide where I wanted to go to go with everything. Um, you know, I'd see the individuals that would come out on the job site, you know, they, some of them had clean white hard hats and, you know, nice, nicely pressed, uh, dress pants. And I always wondered what, you know, what does their everyday look like? So I started asking, you know, some more, more questions into that. And so, um, you know, I chose to go the, uh, management side, the office side of the industry. Like we've said, uh, there are several different areas, um, you know, in construction, the individual could be a part of, and I, I chose the, the project management route, and I've been uh, very happy with that. And, and one of the things that I, that always drew me to construction and, and working with my hands, um, and even from the management side, um, is really the, the tangible results that, that are offered. So I know Bill talked on that just a little bit there about being able to, to see your, your hard work uh, in front of you and see it uh, evolve into something and put a lot of work in. Um, a lot of uh, strategy behind what you do and being able to, to step back at the end of the day and, and see that finished product for you is just always something that um, I have enjoyed. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And I wanted to, to pivot to Jacob and, and kind of get your thoughts, Jacob, on, um, you know, what are some of the programs that you're, that you're diving into right now that's kind of cultivating um, your expertise and just the day-to-day -day in the construction career industry um, that you feel like is giving you plenty of knowledge um, where you are? Well, right now, uh, what we're doing in school, um, we just got done with the Inglewood Arts um, Studio. Uh, we just got finished putting in 90 windows. Um, and that kind of helped me towards where I want to do finish work um, instead of rough end carpentry. Um, right now, we're getting ready to learn, we're getting ready to do uh, plumbing. Um, we've done some electrical, um, we've done some drywall, uh, we just got finished with siding. Um, just over that, it, I liked, I like doing the finish work and there's a lot of different uh, things that uh, the kids can do here to get them moved forward into uh, what they really want to do with the construction. Uh, there's oppor opportunity. 
For sure. And then Bill, you hear that, right? And you talk about your 45 plus years in this industry um, and you start wondering, you know, why the stigma, right? And what we've kind of projected already that we, we talked a little bit about in our, in our set time together. And so how do we start retaining and kind of just jumping into that conversation where we're, where we're getting, you know, aspiring young people to, to not only have a love for, like you say, not, it's just not, to, not just a job, it's a career and looking at it in that light and, and taking ownership of that and, and, and understanding that construction has just as much as opportunity as if you were to go and, you know, do another profession day to day. You know, this, this all has come about because of the, the great shortage of, of, of young people coming into industry for the contracting business. And, and so us as contractors, for us to expect somebody else to fix a problem for us, uh, we have to get out there and, and help be a part of the solution. And so, so, so for me, it's, it's getting out and communicating with all the young people we can and bring them in touch with this industry. I mean, I can remember going back, I had a three-year-old grandson and he loved yellow iron. So he loved the bulldozers, he loved the, the track hose. And so he was enthused uh, by that. And I took him down to, uh, they were building one Kansas City place, downtown in Kansas City. They had this massive hole down there. and. Uh, I took him down there and I was telling him how I worked on this job. And uh, he, he's always been in thrill with it, even though he's, he's almost graduated from college now, he's uh, still has that, that love, that interest in this, in this industry. Uh, he's going to school to be an engineer, but uh, it is getting, even at that age, it's getting these young people involved in, in what this trade is like. Uh, I, I'm not sure what, Drew Jacob to the industry, but there's for for most people there's a love of, of what we do, the the ones that that fulfill a career in construction. But for us as contractors, we had to get involved. We had to get out there and talk to kids. We had to get there and be part of the school system. Uh, the Casey Career Academy, of course, is uh, I started that when it with that when it began, and so I've been a part of that and uh, glad to be part of that. And so we're one of the sponsoring contractors that uh, have signed up to take on uh, young people that come out of that program. And so it's, it's being part of it. It's being out there talking, uh, talking about our industry, talking about what, you know, outside just the, the money piece, which is, is very fantastic, uh, especially for the, we're, we're a union company and we've, I've always been uh, involved with the union since I started the contracting business, but it's, it's very lucrative. It's taking care of my family over the years. It would take care of anybody's family that puts, puts forth the effort to be involved and to uh, get involved with the, with the companies they work for. But it's being part of it. It's getting involved. It's, it's, being, it's getting out there talking. Absolutely. Communication and, and cultivating community and engagement. And Tina, I wanted to ask you, you know, so much has changed over the last year with COVID-19, the pandemic, and how we look at, you know, how do we facilitate, you know, moving back in our offices and all these different things? But on top of that, you know, construction has changed just like every other in, other industry. And so when, you know, even amongst our peer group, adults applying for construction jobs or even young people, you know, what are some of those things that you guys are looking for? Or what are some things that you're like, aha, we need to add or we need to reconsider um, as we continue to move forward um, in this area of, you know, cultivating construction and to Bill's point, you know, immersing ourselves in these experiences more often. So the whole COVID thing has probably drove everyone crazy like it has me. Um, we started school and stopped school and started school and stopped school uh, because now I'm teaching at the apprenticeship program. Uh, so as far as going out and seeing people, I can't wait till the career fairs get back to uh, in person, even if we got to wear a mask. But there are a lot of things of, uh, you know, people are a lot cleaner now as as far as even on the job, trying to keep everything cleaned up and and hand sanitizer and and wearing our masks and things like that. Um, cultivating going farther, hopefully. Um, it does change a few things as far as how we. 
uh, associate with our people and things like that, just to keep the whole world safer. I did want to touch on something that Bill said, though, when he said uh, the money, of course, is great and it'll raise your family. Um, try having two, you know, the husband and wife. Uh, that uh, raised my family very well. My husband and I were both in the union, and um, it it makes a big difference. It really does, and so. Uh, any guy that has a, a tomboy girlfriend or one that thinks that she can work outside all day, bring them on. I uh, think that's what my husband's uh, father told him. He said, well, I'm going to get my friend so-and-so a job. And he said, why don't you get your wife a job? That'd be the best case scenario. And 25 years later, here I said. Yeah, no, nah, that's really good. I'm wondering if I chose the wrong career now. Uh, Steven, do you have anything to add to that? Um, about just, you know, it's a it's a great way, not just for your experience, but also for uh, money. You know, we all need that uh, in society to live and to make a life and to make a living. And so what are some of the things that you would say, um, you know, you wish you would have known um, at, at Jacob's start right now and just kind of how we're looking at construction now that we've been through such a different year for not just construction, but for everybody? Yeah, I think Tina and Bill uh, did a good good job uh, pointing out some of the the main things there with that. And you know, being a, it's it's a it's a career. View it as a career and not just a, a job. It's something that you're going to get invested in and something that you're going to um, you know be a part of for hopefully for for years to come. Um, you know, whenever I have had the opportunity to go and talk to uh, students um, about the industry, that's always one thing that that seems to come up is uh, a couple of things is that it's it's dangerous and that it's uh, a low paying jobs. Um, you know, so I like to I like to listen to them um, when they say that, um, you know, and 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 help them through the understand that, yes, construction can be dangerous. Um, but, you know, the safety that's involved in that and that there's a lot of pre-planning that goes into place. You know, you may not see that when you drive by a, a job site or you see a site out your out the window somewhere. But, you know, there's a lot of planning that that went in place uh, before that to keep everybody uh, safe and uh, send them home safely at the end of the day. And, you know, on the on the project management side of things, uh, you know, I know we talked a little bit on on pay and how it could be. It can't be a lucrative industry to, to be a part of. Um, you know, I was looking back and uh, here in the, the Midwest region, looking for uh, what a, a student graduating from a construction management program um, here in the Midwest region, uh, when they go to work for uh, a general contractor is in the mid sixties. You know, and that's, that's a great uh, salary to start out at. And, you know, from there, as you continue to uh, move through your career and take the different paths that are available to you. It could be uh, something that really can support um, you and and eventually a family very well. So I think just looking back on, you know, understanding what was available, uh, you know, the pay that was there, the different career paths, um, is extremely beneficial to know um, as a young as a young student. Absolutely, thank you for that, Stephen um, and Jacob. I just have a question directly to directly to you, um, what what could the construction industry or what should they be doing to attract more peers um, to apprenticeships, um, to, to shed more light on why this is such a worthy um, profession to, to start your career in? Well, the program that I am in, um, it does a really good job on um, getting you prepared and getting you um, to talk to people. Um, the biggest thing I would do um, is actually go to the schools or have people, the students that are interested or semi-interested in it, uh, come and do like a shadow with us um, and see what we're actually doing and what it's all about. Um, uh, the teacher that is there, um, they can, she's basically skilled in all the traits uh, that we are learning and she'll do a great job explaining them. Um, but the biggest part is just going to the students and telling them what it is about, not just uh, giving them a flyer and saying, you know, you can do this if you want, but we need to actually talk to them and be able to um, tell them the benefits. I feel like that would be probably the best bet. 
Absolutely. Thank you for that. And then Tina, you mentioned about career fairs and that face-to-face -face interaction and getting those things back up and going. Uh, Bill, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this as well. And Stephen, um, kind of now, you know, getting health concerns and things, you know, moving forward, you know, what's next? You know, like, how are we going to make sure that if we're here, that we continue to um, immerse conversation around, you know, the opportunities and what young people should be looking for? What are what are the local, you know, Kansas City um, opportunities or programs that you would like to continue to put emphasis on that that people like Jacob and others should should continue to to put themselves in positions to take advantage of? And Tina, I'll let you go first. I know it's a three way well, question. Um, the Builders Association is actually a very good place to start as they have folder down there that I like to actually pass out um, to some of people that I talk to because it has a paragraph in it about every local union and what the job entitles so or entails so they could look over that if they're not sure um, what field they would like to go into and see all the different things um, that are possible and other than that um, I the career fairs are great because we get to meet and interact with students, but the apprenticeship programs um, are the best step to me for once they figure out what they're interested in, an apprenticeship program is the best way for them to get involved, to get in, uh, get a job, and get going in any uh, trade that they decide to choose. Uh, this this will be my only plug for today. <laughs> uh, like I said, the Kansas City Construction Career Academy is is a was a was a dream that I watched come to fruition, and I have to want to thank uh, J. E. Dunn and some other members of the community that put their best foot forward to make that happen, including Metropolitan Community College. And I think uh, when Jacob came across that program, I think he realized that he had found something that was worth putting this time into. Uh, I think every school district needs to have or get involved and be part of a KC Construction Academy. I mean, there, there's a group of students that have no desire to, to continue higher education, go to college, but they do want to be involved and have a productive life. And so something like the Academy is, is a good jumpstart because it gives you a buy, before, you know, a try before you buy. It gives you a piece of the construction industry without a full-time commitment because the desire would be to leave that program as Jacob has it and come out with a job. And that's one thing the Academy pushes is you will have a job when you come out of this program. Either if you complete the program, do what the program asks you to do, you will have a job when you come out. And that's the goal is to, to how do I start my career? How do I start my life and be productive citizen? And it's a good place to do it. And it's a good way to happen. Then, uh, as Tina said, the, the apprenticeship programs, there's nothing that can top the training that comes out of these apprenticeship programs. I mean, as contractors, that training that's it, you know, just as valuable as can be. It's, you know, it's something we, we need to grow our businesses and, and the unions uh, can provide that for us through these programs. Uh, I want, to say to Jacob also, don't ever stop learning. Continue your education past this job. And uh, I can say it's a, a, the, the apprenticeship programs, the, the contractors, we continue to educate our employees. You know, we have employees that have been here, you know, they've been with us through the whole time and they're still learning. They're still getting educated. We're still, we're still funding educational programs for them. And so uh, it's going to be programs like that. Uh, Capstone's another great program that's out there, and I, you know, it's it's getting involved. And then Stephen, they talk a lot about resources, um, having the opportunities, having the you know just so much that goes into you know jobs. And so when we pivot over to policy making, 
um, and leaders and, and people who we put in positions in our community that can advocate for such things to create more opportunities for careers like construction and funding and all the things that people like Jacob would need to, you know, have plethora of choices to make that decision and to have those um, resources at their disposal. Um, what are some of those things that you would like to see, you know, people advocating more for or leaders like yourself putting forth um, to make sure or to ensure that we continue to have um, policy, I guess, or, or, or things in place to make sure construction is a given? Yeah, I think, you know, they talked about the apprenticeships, how valuable those are and the, and the training that's there. Um, absolutely. I think, you know, having that available to individuals and you know, educating them and the opportunities that are there and what can come out of that and what that can turn into is you know, extremely valuable. And, you know, with the for policymakers, um, you know, if they're deciding, you know, where funding needs to go or the different programs to support. Um, you know, if I can meet with them, you know, I really would tell them that, you know, these programs are extremely important. Um, you know, obviously that, that we feel like the, the funding needs to, to go to those. Uh, and, and I always like to point out, you know, just if they were to look around themselves and think about the building, or the house that they're sitting in, you know, how, how was, how did that get built? You know, and it's the individuals who brought their hard work and training to make that happen because it doesn't, as we all know, that doesn't just happen, you know, overnight. A lot of skill sets, a lot of training involved uh, to get that done. Um, you know, or you think about the road that uh, you drove on most recently. You know, who, who built that road? You know, more likely it's going to be individuals that got into a program and, and received this training and had the opportunities put in front of them. Uh, you know, another there's another program that I was able to be a part of through um, uh, at Staley High School, which was the ACE program, which is architecture, uh, construction, and engineering. And um, that's a really great program. It gets students um, involved. They get to meet uh, folks that are out in the industry and funding programs like that uh, to where they have a project to work on. They can see. Um, what that job can entail and gives them that opportunity, to, I think, like Bill said, to, to try it before they buy it and make sure that's the road they want to go down. Um, you know, and back to the policymakers, we all we all really want and need the, the infrastructure and buildings that we use and reside in um, on a daily basis. And if we don't develop and provide the individual, the uh, industry with individuals um, who have successfully completed these programs, it's going to be harder and harder have these things available to us you know it there's a lot of retirement um that's that's happening we're all seeing that uh the talent the talent pool is going to be uh, becoming limited as we move throughout you know i was looking at a, a statistic just the other day uh put out by the automatic uh, data processing um, and they're saying that 41 percent of the construction workforce including many people in the management role is going to be retiring by 2031. So that's 41 percent of the industry retiring by the by 2031 so that's that's pretty pretty big when you, whenever you come to think of that um and so all these programs the apprenticeships uh, vocational and technical programs they're going to play a big role in this and, and we need to uh we need the funding to keep it alive and well and it's uh it's all hands on deck you know um initiative you know like those that as as contractors and in this industry, it, it is up to us to, to help out with that. And we're going to need those resources available to us to do so. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And Jacob, do you have anything to add about, you know, seeing leaders, you know, better support programming uh, to make your future better and, 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 you know, anything that you would like to see done um, in the near future? Uh, personally, I don't think anything's, um, everything is great so far. Um, I've had a lot of help. Uh, through the past few years uh, going through this program. Um, I also do want to add on that um, we need to let the students, the new students that want to come into the program, uh, that you, you do get an associate's degree uh, through this program, but you don't have to go necessarily into construction. There's a lot of different things that this program can help you do. Um, it, they are construction based, but it's not necessarily you're not out in the elements and everything like that. So if you didn't want to have to do that, or if you wanted to do like an office job, um, it's just as easy to get into as 
um, out into the, the actual field. Yeah, no, that's good. And I have a question for the panelists uh, from one of our viewers from Shannon. Is there something out there that breaks down each trade, uh, starting wage, journeyman wage, and years of apprenticeship program for each trade? And free game for whomever would like to answer. I'm not sure if, well, I'm sure every trade probably does. I, I do have a uh, scale on a piece of paper that breaks down the whole apprenticeship program. And uh, the only thing it doesn't tell them is what a journeyman wage is. Ours goes up to 90%. So um, I would have to add the journeyman wage on to that to be able to uh, just let anybody uh, look at it or we could add it on to whatever. Yeah, Bill, you have uh, anything to add? I think the Builders Association uh, is, is a good place to start. Uh, in any of the uh, union uh, representatives or the offices, you know, all the numbers are listed, are, are glad to share that information. It's not anything that's secret, but uh, this would be a good time. Uh, this is the question that Elise missed today. This would have been right in her uh, wheelhouse to answer this, but uh, Elise Martini's organization uh, would be the one that, I would like to define that information. Well, that's good. Stephen, you have anything? No, I was actually going to say pretty much the same thing as Bill there that, um, you know, through the Builders Association and through the Trades Council, I think a lot of that information is available um, out there. I think even on um, the builders, they have a little bit, I don't know that they break down pay or anything like that, but that all the opportunities that are there, but then I think it also provides link to each one of the the local unions that are out there. So I think there's about what 18 different uh, unions that are part of that, um, that they actually have on their website uh, that the builders is involved with. And I think that that could be a good resource as well. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, that that answers, you know, a plethora of, of of questions in, in regards to the apprenticeship program and, and the wages. Um, I'd be curious to pivot back and Bill ask you about, you know, we're, we're going into the summer. Um, so a lot more, you know, promising, hopefully, fingers crossed, health concerns are better, uh, better weather. Uh, how does that play a role or, or, you know, people, you know, looking to do more, you know, jobs in constructions and kind of get out there more as the pandemic loosens up. Uh, internships, real, ha real hands-on working experience. Is there anything that we should be aware of here locally in Kansas City uh, that you know we should probably, if, if you're Jacob aspiring to move forward or if I'm just looking for a new career, what are some of those things that we should know about looking ahead? So interesting enough, you know, <laughs> weather doesn't play a huge role in the construction, technologies change the way we do construction where we used to have six or seven months out of the year where we really worked hard and then we then we kind of slacked off in the winter that's you know those those are kind of gone now i mean uh they're pouring concrete now at, at minus 10 and so something you never heard of below 30 degrees you know you know 25 years ago so technology has changed our our work does not really fluctuate by season it's pretty continuous during the year uh, we definitely take uh, interns during the summer. Uh, we're involved in several of the uh, local colleges around the area. And so we have a couple of the associations we belong to that uh, we really stress the importance of internships, especially for uh, students in college that, are, that have already chosen a path, you know, as far as like engineering or project management. And so most of our internships because of uh, of age groups and insurance concerns that we have in our companies. In other words, I mean, it's hard to bring a 16 year old into our companies to put them on a construction site and, and not have a concern with their insurance companies about uh, safety. And, and so most of our intern programs we use are, are, are for students that are in college or, or even for, uh, uh, you know, we, we're, we're trying to work more of a capstone and we're trying to work is figure out how to work those kids into uh, going to the job sites to see the job sites. And it's been a challenge for us because of the issues that our insurance companies have with taking the young people out to an active construction site. 
Well, we're trying to work on more of a younger internship program now to bring uh, students in into our office environment. And so they're associated with construction and not necessarily going to an active construction site. So that's been a little challenge for us, but we're working through it. Uh, the internships are fantastic. Uh, again, I mean, if you know what you want to do, you made a decision, uh, the apprenticeship programs, there's, there's no better way to enter into the construction market other than the apprenticeship programs. Uh, there's a program at the airport that, se that seems to be working well on introducing people to construction. Matter of fact, we brought on three apprentices last, this, this year through that program, and uh, they've been three great individuals that have, have uh, worked out well. Uh, but internships, uh, partnerships, uh, Capstone, uh, KC Construction, all those are great entry points into our industry. That's awesome. And then, uh, Jacob, I would ask you, um, how did you hear about the Kansas City um, Construction Academy and how's that played a role um, in your experience with getting to Bill's point, maybe internships or just getting the, the real experience that you're needing to feel confident um, as we look ahead? Well, so it, it, it all started, um, my counselor, I, I wasn't doing uh, very well in school, um, and she offered this program up to me um, since uh, it was a full day, it was hands-on, because um, I didn't really do that well in um, a set classroom, so she offered this up to me, um, and ever since then, I've, I've been here, and I've enjoyed it. Um, the hours are great here, uh, the teachers, um, everyone is helpful, um, and it going through the first year and the second year um i've succeeded in all my classes um and it has been a it's been a, a lot of fun coming here and actually learning something that i can use um, going forward in life yeah no that's that's really good that you felt like there was a different route um uh, for you to kind of pivot um as we've heard a lot lately uh, to to kind of keep on your track and, and what you want it for your career and for your life and moving forward. Um, my, I think for me, the next question would just be for all of you, if you could change anything uh, right now about construction or if you had one thing in your wheelhouse or power that you could do, what would that, what would that be? I'll, uh, I'll add to that there. Um, I think Jacob made a really good point. Um, you know, he was said he approached and, and talked through it with to his counselor at his school and the teacher became involved as well. And I think that's one area that uh, we all have a real opportunity to be involved with is getting, you know, with the, with the teachers, with the counselors um, that are out there and helping uh, to educate everybody about, about the industry and, and what's there. You know, there's, there's several different jobs and career paths that you can take in construction. I know a lot of times the, the, you know, there's usually, you know, talked about the field, um, which are all great, you know, career paths to take. Um, but if you're talking to an individual that's still interested in construction, but not sure if they want to be out in the field, um, I think, you know, talking through, there's several roles, project managers, um, estimators, um, you could be in, a, in accounting in construction. Uh, there's building information modeling or BIM. And we also have the virtual design and construction, which is referred to as VDC, you know, that an individual uh, can be involved with. And I think there, there is an organization um, in the area that, that's in here in Kansas City, and I think uh, and throughout other parts of the, the country as well, but it's, the, it's called NICE, and it's the National Institute for Construction Excellence. And they've done a really good job. Um, they have several different programs that can be brought into the schools. And I think uh, making, helping people to be aware that those are available uh, is really something powerful that we can do. And I know that when Bill was talking through, you know, it's really tough to, to get people on job sites, you know, that are under the age of 18 for insurance. That's a, that's a point I was uh, thinking of as well. And so those, the job shadows uh, that, are, that are out there, uh, job site um, visits are great, but through, are great as well. And through the NICE organization, uh, they also put on what's called iBuild um, annually, and that's at Bartle Hall, and that does give students some opportunities to go out, do some hands-on, and kind of just get to feel get a feel for what some of those career paths can look like. And there are industry leaders and professionals there that can help 
help guide that process. And maybe, maybe there are some, you know, misconceptions that can be answered. And uh, I think the education piece that we can bring to counselors and teachers at the end of the day, because they're the ones that are, you know, helping promote um, different career paths, um, helping to build build students up. The more we can do to give them the the information um, that's available to them, I think they're going to be our, our greatest one of our greatest allies throughout this. Yeah, no, I like that. That's good. Oh, go ahead, Jacob. Uh, so the biggest the biggest part uh, when I started this program, um, it was it's college based. Um, and I feel like that's what scared quite a bit of the kids uh, to not come in here. Uh, that's why the, our classes are shorter than most. Uh, but the, I will say that the classes here were, the teachers were more helpful than most high school. Uh, it was, the, the classes weren't as hard as what I thought they'd be. Um, and a lot of the kids will uh, be able to say that too. And um, all the kids that are down downstairs with us, uh, they're very eager to learn and they're all hands-on, and I'm, I'm glad I did this. Uh, it, it was great for me. Thank you for that. Um, Bill, Tina, as we kind of are on the home stretch, is there anything like far as last uh, impressions, thoughts, things that come to mind um, about just retaining um, young people in this industry um, moving forward um, as we look ahead and, and just people who are aspiring to, to make this into a career. Go ahead, Tina. <laughs> just one thing about, you know, the work out in the field is hard. The work in the offices um, is just as hard. Uh, you have to maintain a balance. But, you know, the main thing about getting a new apprentice or, or, Anybody starting a new job is you're no good if you're not there. If they can show up and be on time every day, they've won half the battle. Uh, we have a lot of, not a lot of problems, but we have problems with that sometimes. And it really, you can, you can do the work, you can get through the job, anybody can do it if they really want to, but you have to be on time and you have to be there every day. Um, without calling in and I mean everybody has problems but uh, your job has to be maybe not number one but without your job you can't take care of your family so maybe number one uh, I love love Kansas City uh, Kansas City has uh, is a good community it's a growing community uh, I think what I'd say is there's a huge amount of opportunity available in the construction industry, whether it's out in the field or in the office. Uh, it's it's not, you know, I, I had a had a teacher tell me one time uh, when we first were getting involved with the uh, the academy that I have my A students, I have my D students. I prefer to send my A students to college and my D students to you. And, and my comment back to them was, no, you misunderstand me. I came here to get your A students. And, and those are the ones, you know, we're looking for the best students for our industry. We, we have, uh, you know, the airport's a $1.5 billion project. We're, we're not building dog houses. We're, we're building major mega construction projects and technology has changed everything. And so we're looking for the A students. The best of the best. Jacob, Stephen, anything you guys would like to add as we conclude? I think, uh, I think Bill and Tina hit that right on, um, you know, eagerness to learn uh, and curiosity. You know, we, we like questions, you know, bring that to the table, um, you know, and writing skills is something that, um, is really big that we look for also um, with young hires and really with any hire, but talking specifically on, with young hires, um, you know, developing your resume, that's your, that's your first impression. It can determine if uh, you're going to get that interview or not. So really paying, paying attention to, to your writing skills and overall professionalism. Uh, professionalism can mean a, a lot of different things, uh, but you know, in my mind, that's uh, punctu uh, being punctual, having good communication skills and, and dressing for the job. 
and uh, communication still skills to be more professional. And by that, I mean that uh, you don't want to email uh, your team or potential uh, employer or client in the same way that maybe you would send a text message to a close friend. You know, so use full words, good grammar, the emojis. <laughs> um, just some the, well, sometimes what we refer to as core skills or good communication skills and, and teach you the job, prepare you for the job. The one thing that you is how to show up on time uh, and carry yourself well. So, yeah, you know, you'll be able to get into anything that you want as long as no matter what career path that a student decides to go to, those are those are things we're always looking for. Yeah, thank you for that, Stephen. Uh, you cut off there for a minute, but I heard good communication and, and not using emojis and, and good grammar. <laughs> uh, Jacob, is there anything you would like to add? Um, I will say, yeah, the, the part of the resumes is um, having them uh, on point and making sure they're correct and the grammar is correct. Um, if, 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 if they're not correct, yeah, you, you're going to have, you're going to struggle trying to get another uh, interview with the company. But as long as those are right, I feel like you'll have a good shot, if anything. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for your time, for your expertise, and just for your longstanding contribution here in Kansas City um, in this space. And it's just so well needed. Uh, we never think about what people do until they're not here to do it. And then we, un and then we learn more about why people's contributions are so important. Um, just like when things stop working in our house and you got to have come people fix them. That's how I look at you guys and just a lot of the things that you all are able to contribute. Um, and so thank you again. Thank you to the Builders Association here in Kansas City for hosting such um, important conversations um, at such critical times. Thank you to the sponsors, uh, J.E. Don Construction, along with SWACO. Hope I said that right. Uh, and just thank you all for, for tuning in and, and listening and joining us this morning. And please uh, go to the Builders Association website to look for uh, upcoming events um, that you all can participate in and join to, to stay plugged in. Thank you again. My name is Kiana Sinks, and, and, and thank you for having us.